So it's been a busy couple of days and week. Um, this is a little bit late, this reflection, but I'm going to go ahead and share the reflection anyway. We're going to look at Joab and David. Usually the story is framed David and Bathsheba, but I'm going to make a couple of jumps. So please allow me to do that. Joab was exceptionally loyal to David, loyal to a fault. Nathan was loyal to the Lord. The Lord spoke to David through Nathan and David responded. So I'm going to jump now. Jesus called God Father and taught his disciples to pray our Father. And if you look throughout the Proverbs, throughout the Psalms, you'll find that, that the Psalmist calls God Father. So it was Gareth's birthday this past week, another jump. And we chatted about loads of stuff, uh, but fatherhood came up. And I remarked, since I've been ruminating on this for a very long time and will continue to, having a father is really painful. It's really painful to have a father correct you, correct me. Now, it's interesting because I wanted to tell the family a story about that. But immediately, mum piped up. But not having a father is more painful which is absolutely the point of my story. Anyway, I recalled that after every milestone, Dad used to take the family out. Birthdays, successes, graduations, promotions. Dad used to almost always take the family out for a, for a celebration. And there's one particular celebration that stands out for me. We went to Hussar Grill in Rondebosch, and I'd never been there before. The steak was one of the best to this day. Um, is one of the best that I've ever had. It was a carpet bagger, if you're interested. And we had that with red wine. So sometimes after the milestone, dad used to take me out alone uh, for coffee and then ask piercingly heavy questions about what are you going to do next? And these conversations were tough. They were painful. They were heavy. And I often didn't have answers to those questions. Only vague, sort of dreamy um, next steps. I think many things about those conversations. But what stands out for me is that as difficult as those conversations were, I would rather have had them than not. Because it's a treasure having a father push you for the best. Having a father to believe the best. It doesn't come across always that way. And those conversations help me to clarify my vision and to think and then to act accordingly. I also think about what it must be like to not have had a father with those piercing questions. And I'm not going to say too much about that. I have friends who um, I've spoken with about that, what their experience has been like, and it's quite subjective. Um, what it must have been like not to have had a father at all. I can say that the research is not promising. Evidently, it's easy to go off course, even with guidance, but it's easier to go off course without guidance. This week, we reflected on David going wildly, of course, putting it mildly, an affair, a failed cover-up with his loyal friend, Joab, and then a plausibly deniable homicide. And that occurs to me to be a truly awful conspiracy, David and his good friend, Joab. Joab was loyal to David, I've always thought that I'd love to have a loyal friend like Joab. Loyal, thick as thieves. But in the context of this story, David and Joab, in the context of the Judeo-Christian story, a loyal friend is not enough. <laughs>